Hello, I'm Retro Jules. This is going to open up a right can of worms, I think. We all play World of Tanks, we all love it. There are certain things perhaps we change or we're not happy with. And if anybody mentions tiering and matchmaking, I can guarantee every single one of you is going to go off on one because we all feel that we've fallen victim to what we think is unfair matchmaking. And I think Wargaming have got a sniff of this and they've just released a passage about explaining how the matchmaker works. So what I'm gonna do is read it out to you. It's a little bit lazy, but their words are probably the best words. So what you're gonna hear now is what Wargaming are saying explains the matchmaking. And for you, this may or may not answer those aching, burning, frustrating questions that you've had. So, one of the biggest mysteries in World of Tanks is how the matchmaker sorts through players and creates teams. Okay, the matchmaker explained. The matchmaker finds a team of players who enters the random battle queue. In doing so, several requirements must be met. Teams should be similar in class and tier. Not sure about that one. Yet tiers differ in ways so that the strategy of the battle varies. Another important factor is keeping the queue wait time as small as possible. Now that I agree with, you never have to wait long for a battle unless you try and play tiers one and two. So the one thing that the matchmaker does consider is the vehicle class, the number of platoons in the queue, the balanced weight of the vehicles and the battle tiers. The things that it doesn't consider are the packages you've got on the vehicle unlocked, the equipment you carry, and the consumables you carry. It also doesn't consider tank nationality, the crews and how skilled they are, or the player skill level. So when creating a battle, the matchmaker first looks to place large platoons, followed by artillery, and then light tanks with scout matchmaking. Yeah, scout matchmaking, tolerance of three tiers. Thanks for that. After this criteria is met, other players are then selected to fill remaining positions, keeping the team's weight balanced as closely as possible. If the matchmaker struggles to meet the requirements of an eligible match, it eases upon the rules to avoid players spending too much time in the queue, i.e. you get dragged into a battle and you don't stand a chance. However, the matchmaker never breaks the minimum balance requirements. If the matchmaker still can't find a good battle after about five minutes, players get kicked back to the garage. Well, that doesn't happen because there's no way you're gonna wait over five minutes for a battle. So, battle tiers. Battles happen in 11 possible battle tiers. These are not vehicle tiers, so don't think you're going to get tier 11 tanks. Nothing to do with that. This is the tiering for battles. Each vehicle, depending on its performance, falls in a certain range of battle tiers to fight in. Now, while the garage doesn't di display the battle tiers, you can obviously see what vehicle tiers it'll go up to. So I'm going to show you a couple of charts and... The charts display the battle tiers that the vehicles fall in and special scout matchmaking and premium vehicles get their own unique battle tier chart, which you can see on the screen now. By all means, pause the video and have a look at those if you need to. So it, it would seem that the, the one major aspect that Wargaming look at when they put you into a tier is the balanced weight of the team all done by vehicle weight nothing that you can look at or influence this is a main factor in forming a battle each vehicle has a balanced weight 
and the matchmaker attempts to keep the weight of both teams as equal as possible, following special weight restrictions for team balance. Balance weight happens by considering vehicle tier and type. However, sometimes specific vehicles are weighed individually. So what can influence this is also platoons. When in a platoon, the lowest tier the platoon is eligible for is based on the lowest common battle tier for all the platoon members. The upper battle tier is determined by the platoon leader. That's a very complicated sentence. What they're basically saying, and you know this already, that who, the, the tank that the platoon leader goes in with is the tank that depicts how tiered you're going to be. So if you're playing a low tier tank with your platoon leader and it's lower than him, you are still going to get dragged into his preferential matchmaking, which means you could be massively out tiered. Platoons of two to three players are weighed similar to a solo player. Large platoons receive special weighing. The matchmaker considers platoon size, average platoon member balanced weight, highest platoon member tier, and tier distribution within the platoon. This means that vehicles in platoons may be weighed more heavily than if the vehicles were solo. And that makes sense because if you play in a platoon, you have got a massive advantage over a solo player. Battles involving multiple platoons tend to create balance weight issues. To address this, when there's a surplus of platoons in the queue, the matchmaker will select the platoons first and fill the missing gaps with solo players. Yeah, we've all been there. Your little Billy No mates playing the game for a bit of fun and there's these teams of players all talking to each other, all communicating to each other and you'll do well if you survive that battle. Lastly, if every member of a platoon has a streak of bad luck in their battle tiers, the platoon's next match will get a friendlier battle level. Whether or not a particular battle was good or bad relative to the battle tier range of the platoon is recorded for each platoon member. That way, everything works as expected when players jump in and out of platoons. Not all this is that straightforward to understand, actually. Team lists, top versus bottom. Yeah, lovely when you're top, not bad when you're middle, but some of you have said, I've had about 20 battles in a row and I've been bottom tier for every single one. And according to this, that's not possible. We know the feeling of being at the top of the list and feel like you can make a difference and to be at the bottom and feel too dependent on your team. Here's what you don't know. If the matchmaker finds a player in the upper half of their battle tier range for two consecutive battles in the following battle, they will be placed into a match in the lower half of the battle tier for that vehicle. This helps prevent players from having streaks of games when they are placed at the bottom of their team list. Right, so matchmaking, the overview of the rules. Total balance weight of opposing teams should not differ by more than 6.67%. Number of platooned players on opposing teams should not differ by more than one-fifth of the team size, which is usually three. Total balance weight of the artillery on opposing teams should not differ by more than 20%. Number of artillery on opposing teams should not differ by more than one. Number of artillery on a single team should not exceed one third of the team size, which is usually five. Oh boy, if you get five RT either side in a game, that is never a fun game. Five is far too many, in my view. Total balance weight of scouts on opposing teams should not differ by more than 30%. 30%? Why do light tanks get such a bad deal in this game? Number of scouts on opposing teams should not differ by more than one. The top third of players 
usually five, on opposing teams should be of equal tier. As mentioned earlier, if the matchmaker struggles to meet the requirements for a match, the above rules will be more relaxed the longer a player is waiting. However, the matchmaker will never drop below the minimum balance requirements. So, has that explained it to you? To me, really, it hasn't yet explained tiering. It's Obviously, there's a very complicated mechanics going on here, and it looks to me that when wargaming do matchmaking, they've got all these factors in the background, but mainly it seems to be judged on weight of tanks. And I can't help thinking that there are certain tanks out there that you come up against and you will struggle, i.e. Tier 7 Walker Bulldog cannot penetrate a Tier 10 Mouse. So, for argument's sake, and I don't know if, if they would take this into account, but you could have one Mouse against five Walker Bulldogs. I don't know, five Walker Bulldogs weigh the same as a Mouse, but just for argument's sake, say they do, and they ended up in battle against each other. Unless you're carrying premium on that tank, you can't penetrate the Mouse. And to me, that is not fair tiering or matchmaking. So this, so anyway, so Wargaming have picked up on this. They've released this news update as to what they do and how they do it. And I've read it out to you. You know how to leave a message. I don't know if this answers any questions, really. It kind of tells you how they do things. But I don't think, for me as a player, it makes me feel any better. This is always going to be a contentious subject and I don't think anything Wargaming say or do will make you feel better when you have had a bad afternoon of tanking and sometimes you know it's down to our own fault you may well get some very good tearing but play dreadfully and lose and be out of the battle and then you may get a couple of games where you're out tiered and suddenly you are having a really bad experience playing the game. And it's not always the matchmaking fault, of course, because what it doesn't consider is how well you do in the game. And if you're having a poor afternoon, you are going to pick up more on the fact that you're bottom tier, getting out tiered and getting annihilated. So... You know, they've brought this out. I don't claim to understand it all, which is kind of why I've read it out the way I have, the way they've written it. I've sort of, I've gleaned a few bits of information from it, but yeah, that's, well, don't really know what else to say. It's there, you can read it. Go onto World of Tanks console. The notes are all there. Have a read. Maybe you'll pick up on something that I haven't or haven't understood correctly. But I, I, I just don't feel any better. What, why is it that if you're grinding a tank and you've got a really terrible cannon, you can still be up against a fully unlocked tank that's two tiers above you? I really think that as you grind a tank and unlock the packages, you should get some sort of preferential treatment until you've got that tank fully specced. That to me would seem fair. I don't care how much my tank weighs. I know if I go up in a stock tank against a fully specced tank, two tiers above me, it's not gonna end well at all. Anyway, keep safe. I hope you find some preferential matchmaking and I'll see you soon.